catching up with newly named Rockford Ice Hogs assistant coach Jared Nightingale. Jared, Joey Z here, the radio guy. And first and foremost, welcome back to the organization. Walk us through the last couple of days, your conversations with Anders, with the, the Blackhawks staff and the coaching staff with the Ice Hogs. What made this a good fit for you to, to leave the OHL and, and jump right back into the American Hockey League? Yeah, uh, first off, I'm really thankful for the opportunity and, you know, not only just to be in the American League, to, but to, to be at a place where I've played and I'm familiar with. Um, I knew Anders be from before and uh, a lot of, obviously I had, uh, Mark Bernard was here, he was the GM. So uh, it made it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, it's been a crazy week. You know, I was coaching in the, uh, the Ontario Hockey League and I think it's pretty rare, you know, with the season already started. Uh, that an opportunity like this came up and uh, really, really thankful that Flint, uh, they supported this decision and this move. And I know it kind of leaves them in a little bind. It's un abnormal. Uh, but yeah, obviously I'm very, very thrilled. This is, this was a goal to get back to the American league and, and I'm excited to, to learn and get to know the guys and hit the ground running. Was it a situation where you reached out to Anders and the staff or did they reach out to you or how did the conversations go and where did it initiate? Yeah, it was, uh, they reached out to me uh, and, you know, like I said, I had a job and I was happy in Flint. And I think with all the shuffling in the organization the last couple of weeks, you know, I never would have thought that it, it affect my life. And, uh, and again, Anders is, uh, is close with my oldest brother, Jason, there's a connection. Uh, I golfed with him last year for the first time. Uh, and I've known him for a few years since I got into coaching and always, always heard great things. And, you know, he's a humble guy. And I, I was really excited at the opportunity to learn. And uh, again, to be back in Rockford, I'm, I'm thrilled. And that's what I, my last question for me is you are back with the ice songs team captain. Your name is on that captain's wall. So you got a little bit of a reputation to come back into that ice hog locker room. What does it mean to be back in the forest city community and, and see, uh, and see the town again, driving through. Yeah, it's changed quite a bit. Not only the, the town, but uh, man, about eight, it's been eight years and the locker room, what an outstanding job they've done. Uh, you can barely recognize it. Not that it was bad before, but geez, with the chef and uh, the layout. Um, yeah, really great setup and, and another, uh, you know, it's a great sign that, that success follows this organization, how they treat their players. So uh, it's second to none. And, but yeah, it's, it's great to be back in the area. I really enjoyed playing and living here and excited for the future here. Scott Lever, your line is active. Hey, Jared, welcome back to Rockford. Good to have you back here. Thank you. Um, when you played, uh, you were a physical guy. You didn't. You weren't afraid to mix it up. You, you racked up a few penalties. But uh, do you want to translate that physicality to the guys you're now coaching? Do you want them to play with a bit of an edge? Oh, I, yeah. I think you can. You can use the word edge or physicality in a lot of different ways. Um, it's not uh, fighting or penalty minutes. I think the hardest players to play against just compete shift and shift out and have a good stick um but yeah i'm gonna definitely encourage the guys to um, make it hard on the opponent and again there's lots of ways of doing that um and take pride starting with your own end you know i feel very fortunate to be able to work with the defenseman obviously i play d and it's my passion and um gonna really try to help them improve uh from our net on out and uh hundred percent. I think the best players that I played with and guys that went on for long careers, one common trait was their compete and being hard to play against. So uh, definitely going to be uh, adding that to the mix. Was today your first practice? No, I came in yesterday, uh, drove in Sunday and then, yeah, it's my second day. Okay. So how, how long do you think it's going to take you to get a read on the, the skill level of the guys here and really get to know them? Well, I think, you know, I've been in, this is my fifth year coaching uh, and, it's really, you know, I coach junior hockey. It's my first time back in the American League, you know, since being a player. It's right away you notice it's quite, it's a jump. Um, and, you know, obviously the more time I spend with the guys, you watch games, you know, I'm still getting to know guys' names and, and numbers. So, you know, we're having conversations with the coaching staff. I, you know, I kind of am just listening right now, but um, I really do enjoy that part of the job. I think the, the relationship part with the players is just as important as what you do on the ice. Um, and I really look forward to that. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Ben Pope, your line is active. Hey, Jerry, congratulations. Um, Thank you. What are just your, your ambitions as a coach? Um, like what made you decide to go into this? And you know, do you want to stay at the AHL level long term or do you hope to eventually get to the NHL or just what's your sort of career path that you're hoping for? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I try to, as a player, you know, you're always looking at the next year and the next year, and then you kind of lose sense of being present. And, you know, yes, do I want to coach at the highest level and continue to improve? Absolutely. But I kind of think that, you know, God has a plan. And, and uh, I think if you do your work and you're present in the moment, um, I think I'll, I'll end up in a good spot, whether it's here in the American League and, or, you know, anywhere in the NHL. Um, I'm trying to take it day by day and continue to learn. And um, big, big reason why coming and getting this job is I'm excited to learn under Anders um, and Peter Aubrey, you know, and, and Mark Eaton, um, Eric Condra's in this week. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of people with a lot of experience. I try to soak it up. Uh, I think that's, that's a good sign of an organization when you, you have quality people and Rockford for sure has that. Um, but yeah, I love my first passion is the pro game. I'm happy to be here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it uh, it feels good to be back in a place that I've played. Obviously, there's been so much change in the Blackhawks organization the past couple of weeks, especially. Um, do you feel like that's kind of, I, I guess, ideal for you to come in with a clean slate and have a lot of responsibilities that need filling right off the bat? Yeah, I think opportunity comes in a lot of different ways. And, you know, regardless, I'm here and, and uh, you know, I, I'm going to try to, like I said, I think uh, – the, the best teams I've been on and the teams that develop players like, like when I was here with Rockford with Chicago is, uh, is a close knit family really uh, take pride in developing day by day. Um, you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity and, and yeah, I want to make a good impression. Um, and, and, and it's great. Again, I feel like I'm finishing every question with that. I've played in Rockford, but again, I have relationships with Mark Bernard, Anders Sorensen, even a couple of these players, I played with Brett Conley, his second year pro Stanton was in Rockford and he got, he got picked up on waivers. So there's a lot of cool, cool pieces to it, but uh, most of all, to be at this level, I'm really fortunate and thankful and excited to take advantage of the opportunity. Thank you. Yep. And Jared, I want to tap into that a little bit too, just because of what Anders said about you. You have the experience, you have the knowledge. Not only have you played with Rockford, but other organizations around the American Hockey League and ECHL. I mean, over 630 games, that's a lot to pull from. And he's kind of leaning on you to be that, that, uh, that post for a lot of these younger guys that you know might be trying to push their, I guess, development along too quickly or, or trying to practice patience and what to look for. What kind of advice are you looking to give to a lot of these guys that right now they're young, they have the blinders on, they see one goal and one goal only, and that's the National Hockey League, but they know it takes time. And you've seen a lot of players over your career that, you know, you've had to maybe help along the way as a player, and now you get to turn it into a coaching role. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think uh, I try to try to encourage them to find, find uh, you know, enjoyment in the process. I think there's a lot of players' careers get cut short and they're unhappy uh, or they want to be somewhere. Like I said, you get lost and not staying in the present. Um, and you know what? I've played, I've been fortunate to play with a lot of players that that made it to the NHL and uh, grinded the way there. And, and a common, common attribute is you, you got to overcome some hurdles and adversity. And uh, I think more times than not, the guys that respond to that the right way never give in, um, you know, they reap the benefits, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a thrill to be in the American league. These players are one step away from their dream. You know, I'm going to be a guy I take pride in having relationships with the players and, and being approachable. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled that it's with the defenseman. You know, I think, uh, what I take pride in is the little details, you know, game away from the puck where it's having a good stick and, uh, taking pride in the plays that don't show up on the stat sheet. Um, that's, that's probably the biggest thing is, and uh, it takes, a, takes a, usually a little bit longer for defensemen. Um, so again, I'm, I'm excited at the opportunity.
And the last one for me is uh, you got a healthy crop of Blackhawks prospects that are defensemen at your disposal to work with the Ian Mitchells, Alec Regula's, Isaac Phillips's of the bunch. I mean, the list continues to grow for this organization. I know it's only day two for you, but for a lot of these guys, you know, already some of them have gotten games in the National Hockey League coming down to the American Hockey League for ice time. What are you looking to work on with with some of these key guys? I think the same thing. You're just getting to know their game. Um, I coached against a couple of these guys in the OHL, like Regula and Phillips. Uh, I know a little bit of what they brought, but this is a whole new level. Um, but, you know, for me to answer exactly, uh, you know, what each guy has to work on and whatnot, but, uh, you know, that'd be unfair, but I'm excited to watch them more, get to know them as people, get to know what they're thinking. Um, and again, uh, I think with defensemen, especially younger defensemen, a lot of times the selfless plays, the simple plays, you know, competing harder on pucks uh, that you don't necessarily, you know, read in the stat on the stat line. Uh, I think those are the attributes of the best defensemen in the world that that uh, that play a long time in the National Hockey League. So I'll we'll definitely try to try to improve around our net. Um, and uh, you know, it's more of a thinking game as a defenseman. So it's a process. And uh, but most of all, like I said, I think just building relationships with the guys is is. Uh, what I'm what I'm aiming for.